In the previous episode, number 6, I showed how to make airlocks in station ears and why. Cognition critical. Health critical. Gen critical. Oh, wow. Power critical. Man, where's all that stuff coming from? I didn't put it here. <laughs> Not bad. Anyway, but what I conveniently glossed over is the problem of repressurization. Because that would make things so slow. Can we make that faster? There, we're gonna expect 101 kilopascals, which is pretty high. It's uh, Earth sea level pressure, and I think it's the default for the simple airlock. This is the advanced one. Um, external, of course, zero. This is the moon. How would you repressurize from the moon? That doesn't make sense. Let's first see what that looks like. Yeah, despite the super vents, I mean, if they have, an, if they have nothing to suck from, then, then this whole thing blows. The problem is here, where the air would have to stream into this thing out of free will, basically. Now with some adjustment, let's see how fast this could be. Okay, that is fast enough. This is just a highly pressurized tank. And so, no wonder the uh, vent can suck from this thing very quickly. Uh, particularly also since inline tanks are not a separate thing. They're just part of the pipe vol volume. That's why they were created in the first place. They also exist now as an insulated version, like we also have insulated pipes. So, no thermal energy can go in and out, but that's beside the point. We can see here uh, we have uh, 600 moles in there, even though it's... And, and uh, despite that, it's only 5 megapascals. Uh, if you look here in this world box, we see we have 150 moles of uh, oxygen at 46 kilopascals. So if we would have 100 kilopascals, or 101, which is what this thing has been set to, we would have like uh, uh, 300 maybe. So I just went ahead and put in uh, 600. And mind you, this thing will be pumped full. When I click here, uh, more stuff will be put in. So we now have a nice buffer that has enough reserves for enough back and forth. But we can see here that what also what happens, of course, is that the room atmosphere will go in there. Um, and this means that this will be somewhat impure. But this is not so much of a problem. I mean, look at the pollutant in there. We could just uh, just take the good old kit liquid drain and slap a passive liquid drain on this thing. So the pollutant, which is liquefied due to the high pressure, would just seep out into the room. No harm, no foul. Also, uh, the stress level in there is very low, so it's not a, doesn't matter anyway. Or we could even be wise about it and do that here on the outside with an insulated pipe. Of course, we don't want any thermal energy bleed. And so it seeps out into the world. Thus, lots of airlock cycling will actually clean our base a bit. Let's find out how much of an effect that would have. I added a little bit of pollutant. Toxin detected. Toxin. 2.81 moles. Now some of that from this world box will now be pumped in there. Allowing it to seep out. And since we're going mining, five minutes later, we can assume that when we come back, it has been cleansed. So let's go back in, now that this is even fun. Two point six, wasn't it? Two point eight one. I will do this now uh, nine more times off camera. Okay, uh, <laughs> that that doesn't fly. Uh, this is the first of these nine attempts, and I'm seeing there's no liquid polluted in there. The pressure isn't high enough. Let me just fix that. That's better. So, the first of nine attempts. Overall, when we come back, it would have been ten. So let's get back in there. Overall, 10 attempts have been made. I think it was 2.81 uh, moles when we started off in this corner. Before the first attempt even, you know. 
Now it's 1.86. So that's still pretty high. Toxin detected. But, um, well, as a passive method of cleaning your base, it's a nice thing to have. Of course we could choose to add some crazy contraption to use this feature more intently. For this test I added a little bit of pollutant again to the air. Toxin critical. And now let's turn this cra crazy crap on. Oh, it's working. Man, the turbo volume pump is so fast that even the large powered vent cannot keep up. Though it's in a corner, maybe that's an unfair, uh, unfair assessment. The large powered vent doesn't just take from its own block, but also from blocks into the depth and into the width. That's why it has been implemented uh, for hangars, you know. So we are like 30 seconds in, or 40 maybe, already half down with the pollutant. That's a pretty powerful scrubber, man. Pause. This is about a minute later. Not yet. Toxin critical. For breathing. Toxin detected. But it's getting better. Let's wait another minute. Yeah, about another minute has passed. From 6% pollutant, we're down to something that allows us to open the helmet. Not bad. So, Toxin detected. Uh, <laughs> Toxin detected. Hey, this is rap music. Oh. Enough of this. So when this lever is on, this large powered vent will fill our little air lock buffer some more until we reach like 30 megapascals and it turns off, determined by this analyzer and of course by the source code over here in the chip. Similarly, this uh, turbo volume pump re reduces the pressure um, once we have more than 15 megapascals. Since it overshoots quite a bit, I chose 15. But let's see, are there other ways to make this faster? Uh, oh, I forgot to set the pressure. There. And I even increased the pressure in here to 101-ish uh, kilopascals, as if that would really help. So again, the original scenario, we go in, and the repressurization is very slow, because the gas has to stream into this passive vent. Let's observe this for a moment to get a feeling of how long this takes. Okay, enough. Matthew J. Osborne commented on the video, uh, the previous episode 6, that uh, the speed of this uh, whole process can be uh, increased a lot if we don't have just one uh, passive vent but multiple and not in the same world box because that would make it faster since the simulation runs box by box but just spreading them out in the room. So let's see what that would do. There, it's prepared. Only this one is still on there, and I will st uh, do a dry run again to see what the difference is, because now we have 220 liters instead of like 10 liters that it was before. Uh, this is still uh, less than 36. Uh, um, you would still have multi to multiply this volume by 36 to reach what this box here has, which is 8,000 liters. So let's see uh, what difference that makes. The particular difference should not just be in one cycle, but two cycles, when um, the air will slowly have to stream back into this pipe network. Okay, that already seems a bit faster, I think. Slightly. Or maybe I'm delusional. That's very, very possible. <laughs> So let's add one active vent. Ah, uh, passive vent. 
So now two world boxes are capable of streaming into the passive vents and right now the pipe network should have equalized with the room pressure. Hmm. Maybe there is a difference, but it's not tangible. Let's add all the other vents. Now for the big reveal. Oh, that is faster. I mean, it's logical, but yeah, it is actually faster. And it's almost bearable, I would say. I mean, still, I still prefer the high-pressure solution, which is simple and space-savingly uh, implementable, at faster even, except if I spread this out in the entire room. But, you know, nice solution. And that shall be it for today.